Provost Lieutenant, 1st Minnesota Sharpshooters, out of our workshop today, Civil War Body Armor. Uh, we don't hear a lot about this, probably don't see that reenactments, but early on in the Civil War, uh, private settlers were selling and marketing body armor. The layout of a Civil War armor, it will be worn just like a vest uh, to protect the front side of the soldiers. Use the natural ridges of the barrel, if we can see them, to kind of line up right through the armpit here. I'll use a marker, I'll outline our The next step is to cut this out. Although not official military issue, bulletproof breastplates were purchased by individual soldiers from peddlers and ordered by mail. Harper's Weekly advertisement claimed the soldier's bulletproof vest has been repeatedly and thoroughly tested with pistol bullets at 10 paces, rifle bullets at 40 rods by army officers, and is approved and worn by them. It is simple, light, and truly economy of life. It will save thousands. Civil War armor used in battle. This armor, made of sheet iron breastplate, shows a deadly effect of an artillery shell with the armor pierced by shrapnel and its wearer most likely killed. In reality, sheet iron breastplates and the soldier's bulletproof vest, which was made of cast iron, provided little value in battle as they were heavy, awkward, and largely ineffective. Those who wore them were also subject to ridicule by their unprotected comrades. Hey parts, I'm pretty, pretty pleased how this came out. I think what I'll do is I'll cut out another piece and maybe provide some additional breastplate protection here, giving us two layers versus one. Here's the layout for the second piece of armor. You can see I have some uh, red tape around the edges. So We've got number two done. I'm picking up some speed. We'll clean this one up a little bit too, get out some of the rough edges. Let's start at number three. This armored vest is for Captain DeLuke of Hastings, Minnesota. This vest is made from jointed steel plates by the Atwater Armor Company. While wonderful in theory, the vest had drawbacks in practice. First, they were heavy. Everything the soldier took with him had to be carried on his person. The 10 pound vest in addition to the required 50 pounds of gear, quickly became a burden on a long march in a hot summer sun. Second, the vests were dubious of value. They were produced by any number of manufacturers to various levels of quality. Some of the vests did protect, but others were shot clean through. And third, a soldier with an armored vest was very likely to be labeled a shirker by his comrade. Afraid to face the enemy. Bards, piece number three is done. We'll take this to the grinder. This may be my last bit of cutting for today. I'm going to cut a center section off with the ridges here. And I'll be using that to create a double layer. Double layer of metal protection. Here's a look at our mostly finished product. You can see we built three shields today. Two of the shields, we've got an extra piece of plating that I'll find a way to fashion in. That'll give us double the thickness, double the protection. This is Lieutenant, First Minnesota Sharpshooters. We finished, finished part one of this series, the Manufacturing of Civil War Era Body Armor. Be sure to stay tuned to part two of this series when we test out the body armor with some of our fine weapons. Be safe, keep marching, and maybe we'll see you on the field on the march around the campfire.